Well, this is the hovercock. I'm Peter Lamb, chief test pilot for Saunders Road, who built her. Most of my time, I test aircraft that fly fast and high. It's quite a thrill flying faster than sound. Only the other day, I flew a new machine for the first time, the hovercock. Maximum height, 15 inches. And speed, about 40 dots, which is nearly 50 miles an hour. And it was just as much a thrill testing out this quite revolutionary cushion craft. It's quite a simple machine. The fan in the chimney on top is driven by an engine and blows air out of the jets underneath. To drive the craft forward, the air is blown out backwards. And to drive the craft backward, or to act as a brake, the air is blown out forwards. I operate it like this. The rudders are in the jets. And there are little flaps which are moved to keep her level. The first flight was certainly an experience. A crowd of press photographers came along to watch. They didn't know what to expect at first, but they soon got used to the idea of four tons of iron mangui floating on air. It felt good to be floating on a cushion of air for the first time. I soon got the hang of the controls. Credit for the design of this craft goes to Dick Stanton Jones, the chief designer for Saunders Road. We went the whole hog that day and later tried her in the water for the first time. Gingerly, we towed her out. Would she rise? We weren't sure. I started the engine and a moment later, we were poised, hovering 15 inches above the sea. The amount of spray surprised everyone. At first, I couldn't see much from the cockpit. But underway, vision improved. Perhaps this picture is an omen. And one day, the descendants of our little hovercraft will replace the queens on the Atlantic run. Since our first test, I have been putting the hovercraft through her paces almost every day. We fitted this new nose curtain to help us over rough water. Come aboard. We'll go for a trip. The engine makes the Dickens row well. So I won't say much more. But I think you've got the idea.
hovercraft caught everyone's imagination. And amongst the many officials who have been for a ride in her was Duncan Sands, the defense minister. And the man who thought up the whole idea and started work on it six years ago was Christopher Cockrell. I started working on the idea in my boatyard on the Norfolk Broads. Messing about with boats soon made me think that there must be some less wasteful way than just pushing them through the water. As you see, a motorboat creates a lot of wash, and this all represents power going to waste. I tried various methods of achieving a film of air between the bottom of the boat and the water, so that the boat could glide on air, but the air wouldn't stay there. In the end, I thought of a solution, and I made up a simple model out of a couple of tins. Now, I'm going to give you a demonstration. Here is a plane jet, and I'm going to show the thrust of the plane jet by aiming it at the scales, and then the reading will go up here. And then I'm going to put on the um, cans where the air comes out round the edge here, and then you'll find that when I make the cans approach the scales, the reading will go up much higher. So let's do that. It worked and showed that one could get a thrust using the tins, which was much greater than the thrust from an ordinary jet. The next job was to make a proper working model. It was built by Desmond Truman, a boat builder friend of mine. I demonstrated the model to various people but couldn't arouse any real sustained interest. But that's a long story. At last it was taken up by the National Research Development Corporation and things began to happen. In short time, Saunders Row were hard at it, designing an experimental craft with everyone working at top speed. Soon models began to appear. These were tested in the tanks and over grass. In the tanks, the model hovercraft showed a greatly improved performance when compared to a boat of the same size. At slow speed, they both travel easily and smoothly. At speed, it showed that the hovercraft produced practically no wash. These models led to the four-ton experimental hovercraft, and the next stage will be a nice streamlined 85 mile an hour craft, probably weighing about 10 times as much. To us, the hovercraft is sure to come, but you mustn't think it will all come in a minute. There's a lot of work to be done. We started with two tins, and now we have the Saunders Row craft, and one of these days, you will be crossing the channel on a cushion of air. Saturday, the 25th of July, 1959, was the day on which Christopher Cockle's prophecy began to come true. On this day, the hovercraft made its first successful crossing of the English Channel, skimming in a cloud of spray through the entrance to Dover Harbour shortly after dawn. Holiday makers had got up early to welcome the arrival. It was 50 years exactly to the day since Blerio had flown the channel for the first time and landed his flimsy plane in a field on the cliffs of Dover. Here was another channel crossing that had made history and perhaps opened the way to a new form of travel. 